It's not that easy. What if this Thanksgiving, we made the choice to look at God's presence among us? What if our focus landed not on the events of 2010, but on the God who was present with us during those events? We'd see a God who was there in the middle of the rubble. We'd be comforted by the sovereign hand that's holding ours as we journey through this heartache, through this insecurity. Thanksgiving, thanks living. Uh, this is the last Sunday in our one month to live, and, and I don't believe it's a coincidence that it ended up being the Sunday before Thanksgiving that we ended up here. You know, I, I think a thankful heart is one that recognizes God as the giver of life, and, and once we establish that life is a gift, I think we're able to understand that it's brief, that it's precious, and that we can learn to live it to its fullest. So. The whole point of the series, <laughs> One Month to Live, was not to prepare you to die. The, actually, the point of it was to prepare you so that you could live. And, and God willing, all of us have a, a, lot, a lot, more, lot more days, a lot more months, a lot more years, maybe decades. Uh, but, but the point is, we need to learn how to live life to its fullest. And, and hopefully this six-week series has forever changed you. That is our desire, that, that it has really changed you in your perspective on life. And as we walk through this, we've discovered four principles, four universal principles. The first one, if you remember, and it's been several weeks ago, the first one we talked about was live what? Humbly. Passionately. Oh. Live passionately. Stay with that only there. We'll get back to it in a minute, all right? <laughs> live passionately. The second one was love completely. The third one was learn humbly. And the last one we talked about last week was what? Leave boldly. Yeah. So our life then is a gift from God. What you do with it is your gift back to God. Understand that? And, and if you've taken the one month to live challenge, you, you've made some significant changes, hopefully, in your life. So you, you may be saying, well, what now? We've gone through this series. What do we do now? Well, if I were limited to the one thing that I wanted you to take from this series, it would be to ignite and restore passion to your life, to live lives of thanks living, if you will. 
You know, really to live that kind of life. And if you only had one month to live, I know, you know, that you would do things differently. You really would. If you knew that you only had one month to live, you would want things that you did to fulfill some sort of purpose, something that would last for eternity, something that would be significant. Invest yourself in the relationships that would mean something for all eternity, wouldn't we? That's what we would do. Jesus said the thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy, but my purpose is to give life in all of its fullness. Other translations say more abundantly. Some say to the maximum. I want, to give, I want you to have life and have it to the maximum. So circle the word life. We're going to come bounce around with that today. Life. Jesus said my purpose is to give you life, to give you a zest for living that you've never experienced, the enthusiasm for life. To live life with passion. That's what Jesus wants us to do. Now doctors, doctors are always trying to come up with new medicines so that we can add years to our lives, aren't they? They want us to live longer. Add years to our lives. Jesus said, I've come not to add years to your life, but to add life to your years. Yeah. <coughs> Jesus said, I want you to live a passionate life so you won't leave here with regrets. This verse not only tells us that, that Jesus has a purpose for our life, interestingly enough, it also says that Satan has a purpose for my life. Notice the word steal, kill, and destroy. That's Satan's plan for our life. He wants to steal away your passion. He wants to kill your dreams and destroy all the love in your relationship. That's his plan for your life. That's what he's working toward. That's his purpose. That's what he's all about. But God has a wonderful plan. He wants to fill your lives with passion so you can live the life the way that God meant for us to live life. But Satan is a thief. He's trying to steal from us. He uses the stresses, the problems, the pressures of life to absolutely suck the life right out of us. To drain our passions away. That's what Satan wants to do. So if, you've, if you're right there, if you've lost your passion for life, how do you restore it? I think we all need that message. We need this message this morning. And, and I think passion is kind of like a puzzle. You know, there are pieces to the puzzle. You've got to kind of put it all back together. So I thought we'd do something fun this morning. Russell, come on down. Russell Talley has agreed to be our volunteer this morning. Watch my mic in front of the speaker. Could go crazy. It didn't? Okay. All right. Russell has agreed to be our guinea pig. And, and we have a puzzle of the 50 United States of America. Now, Russell, <laughs> fortunately, he's in the spotlight. <laughs> no pressure, Russell. <laughs> fortunately, the Passion Puzzle does not have 60 pieces. Otherwise, we'd be here a long time this morning, okay? And the Passion Puzzle has four pieces, all right? And we're going to look at the, the pieces. Scripturally, what are the four things? And we're going to use, I said circle that word, life. We're going to use life as an acrostic to discover the pieces of the puzzle that Christ wants for us, okay? If we want to truly have life, here's what we're going to do. First of all is the L. The L stands for, it's in down the screen, there you go. Love, there you go. First, the L is for love. Now, therefore, loving as he loves. Remembering how passionate we were about our relationship when we first came to know him. Go back there, return to that place. Truly love Christ with all of our heart. Everything that we do and say reflect the love of Christ. That's love. That's what love is all about. The, the second letter is I. And I is going to stand for integrity. Now, integrity. Let me give you a simple definition of integrity. Integrity is simply integrating, and I know I'm not supposed to use the root in the definition, but that's okay. <laughs> integrating what I say I believe into my daily actions. Integrity is integrating what I say I believe into my daily actions. Let me give you an example. So we have love, we have integrity, and the F stands for forgiveness. So now we get to E. This is a natural transition into E, which is enthusiasm. Enthusiasm. The little...